Never once have I had so much difficulty trying to get an operating system to run in a virtual machine. And this actually proves to myself why UEFI is terrible. Because I don't want to use v VM Workstation 16 player, uh, non-commercial use only, as a virtual machine for any operating system that uses U UEFI, because this doesn't work in VirtualBox, this doesn't work in Kimu, this has to work in this operating system because I don't have the OEMs, like, uh, UEFI stuff enabled. And Kimu on Windows is a fucking hellhole. I could probably do it on something like Arch Linux easy with Kimu, but since I have to use Windows 10 for school, I'm kind of stuck with this situation. But I found a new distribution called Expedius OS, whom I actually might partner with uh, with Fivnex because their company, uh, Midstall Software, has Expedius under their belt, which is really a really cool operating system from what I can tell. Now, I'm running the x86-64 version, which is not their main version of Expedius OS. The main version of Expedius OS being, of course, the PinePhone version. So this is a basically a desktopified PinePhone operating system. And so far so good, it uses XFCE for some reason, which is uh, a little strange. And I can't find exactly which, uh, which, uh, I, I'm sorry, my brain is just dying. Maybe a GNOME shell like dashboard for Expedia's. Okay, so it uses a custom dashboard, it seems, uh, which is cool. And it loses, uses Lunar, which I think might be a th modified version of Thunar. I could be wrong. I've actually never heard of Lunar, so that's going to be cool that they have their own-ish fork of a existing file explorer. Hold on, one of my nails exploded and I am having difficulties using my finger now because I am about as useless as a potato. But anyways, this runs XFCE. Uh, you might, you don't see it, but on my thing it's called Fedora for some reason and uh, I can't seem to find a terminal application for some reason, which is I'm useless. N no terminal? This is blasphemy. How am I supposed to install anything? Especially with the fact that this comes with zero applications. Fascinating, and I don't want to bother fucking around with it too much right now. So, it's a very bare bones operating system. No applications, just a bunch of settings. Now, they have clarified that the version is, hold on, let me double check, let me double check, let me double check. That's me trying to fix UEFI stuff. We might as well not fucking worry about that. Oh, it is, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Version, oh my god, why am I so useless? Should be. I should have, a, okay. So it's a preview version of, I think, 1.0.0.1.0, oh, I think it was. Uh, let me, yeah, okay, so I'm back on the downloads page, and it is, yeah, version 0 0.1.0 .0 pre-alpha. So this is early access software, which is something I'm pretty good at finding somehow even though I actually do want to look at an, a full-fledged small operating system, I might look at something like a, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to look at the OS that shall not be named. I would rather look at Xerbo Linux, a, what is called a uh, harassment distro, as I like to call it, like a distro designed to harass someone who has nothing to do with the project by associating them with the project. Yeah. Uh, so, we will get into the story of Xerba Linux another day, but for now, let's us continue talking about this. 
this strange terminal emulator other why is there no shell that it's incredibly strange to me that there are no applications no terminal like it can't be that hard to put in like some kind of terminal emulator which you know is fine it works this thing uh well, I want to try uh This probably won't work. This never works, but I always like trying it because I think it's fun. One, two, three. And uh, it's going to, yep, it never works, but it's always something I like to try because sometimes the browser is hidden very, very uh, quietly somewhere. Sometimes, very rarely, but you know. I, I, I wonder if, because it is amazing to me that uh, this whole situation it's an entire operating system with next to nothing. Like nothing in these files. File system, you have like the basic boot, VM Linux, uh, you know, general stuff like that. TMP, which has this SSH engine, which again, you can't open because there's no terminal emulator. And if I'm, if I'm right to assume, we can create a document, empty file. Uh, let's call it Tesla SH because I always want to I always show you I don't edit these and I'm, I'm finding it absolutely fascinating yeah no such thing as a terminal emulator on this device no web browser no nothing so currently it's a very useless operating system but this operating system has a lot of great upcomings and uh, this is not the only thing I want to look at in the next uh, couple videos I want to make, but this this was an interesting find. Uh, it's, if I go back to the website, expediusos.org.com, don't listen to me, it's .com, expediusos.com, uh, it has the... Lightweight, designed with the essentials, Expedia's OS is lighter than most systems and sh as it ships with what is only needed. Apparently, that you don't need a terminal emulator, but I could be wrong. They might add it soon. Easy to use, shipped with a custom desktop solution to create an easier and more modern design for everyone. Fair enough. That's a selling point every OS has. Um, Developer-friendly source code can be available online for Expedia's OS. Developers can also write their own applications and submit them to the App Store. Which, I have no idea whether or not this is an independent distribution or based on, as VMware detected it, Fedora Linux, which was interesting. It looks like LFS because it doesn't boot like Fedora Linux and, of course, it doesn't... It only supports UEFI, which is severely interesting. Uh, actually, if we go into, I'm going like uh, there's a lot of different conflicting options. Like, for example, like the packages repo is a fork of Void Linux packages, uh, which I'm too lazy to show you this anyways right now, but. Void Linux packages, fa package manager, uh, ex expired dbuild for which doesn't exist anymore uh, as it was archived, Lunar, which is, yeah, I was right. It was a fork of Thunar, Thunar, which is interesting. Peers are not watched, peers are not watched, peers. Are... So apparently the, the shell? So that's, oh, so it was uh, just a uh, desktop environment. So as far as I can tell, and I might be completely wrong, but this operating system is built on top of Void Linux, which is interesting. Very, very interesting indeed. And... 
access is GitLab. What? So there's a lot of interesting things here because ESWM. They use their own fork of XFWM4 called ESWM. What? Tokyo theme, which I think is the shell theme. The color scheme for VS Code. What? 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 This is a fascinating OS. I actually didn't expect half the shit I would have to deal with. First off, I spent over 30 minutes having to go through fix after fix after fix only to lead up on VMware. Second, this whole thing uses EF, UEFI only. Third, this thing seems to only support Void, like, which is a, seems to be a fork of Void Linux, if not LFS, which is something very rare. This doesn't have a pre, a built-in shell, has the four built-in workspaces. It's built on XFCE with a GNOME-like theme. There is so much with this operating system that I want to go into and dive my ass right in there. But with the current development stage, it's not exactly prepared yet. Do I recommend this OS? I can't say for sure. Right now, I don't have enough information. Right now, I don't have enough... I don't have enough anything, and I don't really think... Uh, let me go to the wiki real quick. Because that's how I figured out how the uh, well, help partially uh, figured that stuff out. Uh, which, by the way, their wiki isn't like a fandom.com. It's a media wiki that was ho that's self-hosted. That's interesting on its own. Because, yes, I ha there's a lot of those. I can wiki, for example, is the one I frequent. But... It's, it's, it's so fascinating. And they have non-ARM PC, X, I, I, I686 and X8664, which is the one that they support currently. Pinephone, but they also have plans for OnePlus 7 Pro, the Galaxy Tab 2 and the Galaxy S2, and the Dreamcast. The... The Dreamcast? This is getting more and more and more interesting by the minute. And pre-alpha... Expedia Shell is a fork of X64. Meaning to be however evident. What? What? The early development uh, began in October 2020, which is... Four months of development? For Titan Ross, but that was too limiting. To build Arch on to Arch Linux, however, cross compiler environments, so Titan's killing. Tristan started using Void Linux, so. And found that it's a promising base. So this is Void Linux based. Another Void Linux distro, which, by the way, if you don't know, which pretty much is everyone who watch my ch watches my channel. I'm a huge, massive, mega fan of Void Linux and Void Linux uh, forks. I'm talking about you, Agarin, Agarin, which is something I'm looking into and something, when possible, I want to test out, like, as soon as possible because this operating system looks interesting and it's another Void Linux. Please subscribe to make sure you don't miss that one. There is a lot of interesting things with this distribution, but currently in its current state, in its very, very early development state, the fact that they're running their own package management system too, they're not just using Void Linux packages. According to them, they have plans, and I know this by their wording when talking about the dot browser and porting it to, uh, which is a... Uh, Firefox fork that I will make a video on when it releases, by the way. But the CEO said, 
uh, something about it being, yeah, third-party applications will have to go through the application process, the application marketplace, when that launches. So there is a custom application marketplace, which I assume also means a custom package management system. This is all speculation, mostly because this operating system has too little information, too little development, and too little practically anything to say for certain. However, I am ecstatic to see what this operating system becomes, especially with it being a void Linux base. This is, to my knowledge, the first void Linux phone OS fork. Manjaro has one, Ubuntu has several, uh, at least several possibilities for it. Ubuntu Touch, there we go. Uh, which also includes Debian, Arch has the Manjaro, Gen 2... I haven't heard anything for Gen 2 yet, but it's a high possibility with its popularity. And for the Slackware family, I've not heard anything yet either. But this OS has a lot of amazing promise and I am ecstatic to see what it does. Anyways, I have to go record the Agarim, uh, Agarim OS video because I've been wanting to do that for so long, but I've just been putting it off because of other work things. So I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, this was a wonderful OS. I will link to the thing down in the description down below. I hope you had a wonderful day, everybody, and I will see you next time. I don't know why I did that. See ya.